Welcome to the Women in Podcasting show. My name is Jennifer Hensel. Today we'll be talking about creating elevator pitches for podcasters and expert guests. And I have some other networking tips for you as well. You can find all the links for today's episode at womeninpodcasting.show. Welcome to the Women in Podcasting Show. Enjoy inspiring stories, interesting interviews, and powerful strategies from women around the world. Jennifer Hensel spotlights today's top podcasters, new podcasters, and expert guests. Get tips for leveling up your life, gaining visibility, growing your business, monetizing your podcast, and so much more. We invite you to support women in finding their voice and sharing their passion. It's all about women empowering women. Hey everyone, Jennifer Hensel here from the Women in Podcasting Network. I wanted to give you some tips for networking for our upcoming Zoom networking meeting. And I thought you'd find this helpful. If you're new to this, then you can polish up an intro for you and your podcast or your guest expertise, because at our networking events, podcasters and expert guests are welcome to join us. And so I wanted to give you some tips around creating your inspired intro or what some people call your elevator pitch. And so I'm just going to share the screen. Elevator pitches for podcasters. Think about why you want to do networking, why you want to create and deliver a pitch for your podcast. Do you want to get more listeners? Do you want to find collaboration opportunities or build community around your podcast? There's lots of reasons. One of the most fulfilling reasons that I have my podcast is for the amazing collaborations I have with other women podcasters. And then ask yourself, who am I talking to? Who is your audience? for your podcast and for your elevator pitch. And why should they care? What is the benefit for them to connect with you, to listen to your podcast, to collaborate with you, to be in your community? And then what do I want them to do? So when you're giving your elevator pitch, what do you want people to do? Do you want them to go listen? Do you want them to connect with you to be a guest on your show? What are you looking for them to do and how you want them to connect with you? The number one thing to keep in mind and to remember is to be concise. Remember, it's not about telling everything about everything. It's to give a compelling reason to get people to talk with you further or to go listen to your show. So as some of you know, I founded a large business network, which then I sold, but I had it for a number of years and I learned so much about networking. I saw thousands of elevator pitches over the years and I can tell you what works and what does not work. These are my tips for you for creating an elevator pitch. Open with a compelling question or statement or quote or interesting stat, or a little mini story. Remember, you're trying to keep it within 30 to 60 seconds, typically in most networking situations. Then state your name, the name of your podcast, and who your podcast is for. Your avatar, who's your audience. And then you could say something like, so they can. And what that means is the result. What is the result? They're going to listen so that they can what? So for example, my Women in Podcasting show is for women podcasters and expert guests who want to start, grow, or monetize their message. Then you're going to want to mention your call to action. So what do you want people to do? Do you want them to go listen to your podcast? Where can they listen to it? If you want them to connect with you for a collaboration, how can they connect with you? You need to tell them exactly what you want them to do. I also have a template for expert guests. So let's go take a look at the website because I have lots of resources over there for you. You can go to that page and get a full training in creating your pitch, lots of ideas, lots of writing prompts for you to help you out. Let's go take a look. So here we are on the creating your inspired introduction page of my website, and I'll include a direct link to this in this post. So when you scroll down, you'll see the structure of your inspired intro, or as some people call it, your elevator pitch. So when you start, make sure to include your name and your podcast name, which is four, and then you will include a description of your avatar or your ideal audience. So they can, and so that you want to create a result or outcome. So that could be one to three sentences. So it's a brief description of your podcast. Think about how does your show help your audience and what do they want to get out of listening to it? Okay. 
And then you could close with something like, if you'd like results like that, I invite you to listen at time and date, if you have a specific time and date or at the address, the website address for your podcast. Um, a lot of people say all, on all the popular podcasting platforms, which is fine, but in our networking events, avoid saying that because I will be sure to mention that all the podcasts today can be found on all the popular podcasting platforms. And it takes seconds away. It takes time away from your intro. So just mention things, links, and things that are specific to your podcast, okay, in our networking event. We want to have it where you have a concise intro. This is for anyone who needs help in this area, or maybe you've never done this work before where you create a concise 30 to 60 second intro for yourself, then this is going to help you just organize your thoughts. Now you may have it in a totally different format, no problem whatsoever. We just want to make sure that we can fit everybody in. So we want to make sure that you have a 30 to 60 second intro for yourself and your podcast. Now, an advanced feature is that once you get used to that and once you're comfortable with that and um, you know, you've done it a few times, then consider adding a compelling question, quote, stat, or statement at the beginning or somewhere in this, or even a little mini story. I have an example of a mini story that I include. It's just a few sentences long when I have a minute or so. So I introduce myself in my podcast, and then I talk about how I worked with a coach. She had all her credentials in the world. She came to me for help to monetize her message and to generate income from her expertise. And she just was not getting any traction. She had all the expertise and knowledge, but couldn't land any clients. She joined my four month method. And after only a couple of weeks, she contacted me and was in tears and saying, I cannot believe I already have a paying client. And she had made a few thousand dollars after just a couple of weeks of working with me. If you'd like to know my methods that I used with her and that I taught her, then you can listen over here or you can click this link or however you want to say it, then that's how you would draw people into your podcast or into your expertise. Okay. So that is one example for you. You want a mini story that's really brief just a few sentences long that you can put into your intro that's going to compel people. Because remember, it's not about attracting everyone for everything. You're attracting a very specific person. You're not trying to tell everything about everything. Because all of us do a lot of things. But when you're doing an intro for 30 to 60 seconds, you want to focus on something specific. So if you're promoting your podcast, that's easy. You can narrow it down to everything about your podcast. If you're and a guest expert, you know, mention your specific topic. I, if you scroll down further, you'll see this is a format for entrepreneurs and expert guests. So it's just a little bit different. You can read through that if you're an expert guest and get a better idea of how to create your inspired intro. Now, if you scroll down this page, there's tons of resources for you to help you with creating this if you need more help and training. This is a full training on this topic. So tips for crafting your inspired intro. Be clear and concise. Clarity is key. The process of making your message concise will help you to gain clarity. So even going through this process is going to help you even become more clear. Because if you're not clear about how your client can work with you, then how is your client supposed to figure it out, right? It's not up to them to figure out how to work with you. You have to be really clear on how your client is going to work with you. Focus on one thing. So make sure, so for podcasters, this can be your podcast, but for expert guests, make sure that you focus on one specific area that you help people. Or if you want to be an expert guest on other people's podcasts, then mention the topic, the one or two topics that you really focus on and that you could speak on as a guest on their show. All right. And then your call to action, make sure that's extremely specific. So as I mentioned before, don't just say, oh, you can find it on all the podcasting platforms. Make sure you have a specific link or you know your website or a specific place that people can go or if you have a call to action as far as a an opt in something people can download so that they connect with you further a lead magnet that is most ideal all right so you can see there's lots of tips here to help you with all of this lots of writing prompts how to create little power stories to put in there make it really concise but you really want to have a 30 to 60 second version 
because you can use that all over the place. They call it an elevator pitch because, you know, if you're at a conference and you meet someone in an elevator or in the lineup for the restaurant or all those kinds of things, you're going to be able to present yourself in the most professional, concise way and have clarity and really show your expertise in that introduction. All right. So why 20 to 30 seconds? The reason networking groups ask you to deliver your introduction in such a short format of time is so that there's more time for relationship building and networking. So one of the best things you could do is compel people to want to come and talk with you and ask you further questions and connect with you further. That's the whole purpose of it. It's not to sell in that 30 to 60 seconds. You're not trying to sell in that time. You're trying to compel people to come and connect with you and collaborate with you and connect with you further. So a couple other tips I want to go through with you for networking in general. Make sure that in your social profiles, you have your podcast or your show listed and really near the top. And if you're a guest expert, make sure you have your website. So you can see my websites and my shows there right at the top of my social profile. Well, this one is Facebook, but in any of your social profiles, make sure you list your podcast. I'm surprised at how many podcasters don't have their podcast in their profile for people to easily find so that people don't have to hunt and pack all over the internet to listen to your show. My name again is Jennifer Hensel. Thank you so much for listening to my tips for networking. And I look forward to seeing you at our upcoming networking event. Thank you for listening to today's interview. You can find all the links we mentioned today in the show notes at womeninpodcasting.show. We'd love your follows, subscribes, and positive reviews. They help us to elevate women's voices everywhere. I invite you to join our community in the Women in Podcasting Facebook group and VIP club at womeninpodcasting.club. 